Also coming up in the next hour, new rules on smoking in cars. Hello, very good morning to you and welcome to BBC News. The American and Russian militaries will hold talks as soon as possible to avoid accidental clashes with each other in Syria. That's according to the country's top diplomats. Russia says its aircraft carried out about 20 missions against so-called Islamic State on Wednesday. Raids were reported in the provinces of Homs and Hama in this uh, purple territory, mainly controlled by rebels who are not linked to Islamic State. The United States says it's concerned that the targets were not IS. Militants who are based in this orange territory are the IS groups. Well, our Washington correspondent, Laura Bicker, reports. And with me now is James Nixie, the head of the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House, a think tank in international affairs. Thank you very much for joining us, James. Uh, has Russia proved its point with this to both its domestic audience and international audience? Are we going to see more of the same, more of those airstrikes that we saw yesterday? Or are we genuinely going to see some coordination now between Russia and the US-led coalition over airstrikes? Uh, the Russian involvement strengthens the positions of Assad government forces, uh, even if they're attacking other rebel, non-IS uh, rebel groups in Syria. Doesn't that ultimately mean that uh, the, the, the uh, Assad forces will be in a stronger position vis-a-vis -vis so-called Islamic State? In terms then of tackling so-called Islamic State, do you think that the Russian involvement will decisively uh, change things, will really diminish their strength? It's Nixie from Chatham House. Thank you very much. And there's more analysis of Russia's motivations and maps of the areas. Now, it's being hailed as the biggest shake-up to shoppers' rights for a generation, and it comes into force today. Anything you buy from now on will be covered by the new Consumer Rights Act. The new legislation will offer more protection to customers if something goes wrong with an item. And for the first time, mobile phone downloads will also be covered. Ben Thompson has more details. Jeremy Corbyn will visit Scotland today for the first time since becoming Labour leader. A public inquiry into historical allegations of the abuse of children in care is due to begin in Scotland today. Targets are being scrapped in Wales for how long it takes for an ambulance to arrive for most 999 calls. Of defeat if most of those targets are being scrapped. Howell, thank you very much for that. Howell Griffith there. Now time for the headlines for you on BBC News this morning at 17 minutes past 11. Breaking news about two brothers charged in connection with an acid attack on a woman in Southampton. They have appeared in court. 26-year-old Geoffrey Midmore and 22-year-old Billy Midmore, both from London, are charged with conspiring to cause intention, intentional grievous bodily harm on Carla Whitlock. Uh, you may remember that acid attack on the mother of six in Southampton. Uh, Jeffrey Midmore is also charged with causing grievous bodily harm with intent. Both brothers remanded in custody to appear at Southampton Crown Court uh, later this month. Now, it's uh, time to take a look at sport. Let's uh, join Hugh at the BBC Sports Centre. Hi there, Hugh. A ban on smoking in the same vehicle as children comes into force in England and Wales today. Anyone who lights up in a car carrying under 18s can be issued with a fixed penalty of £50. The driver can also be fined for allowing others to smoke, as Richard Lister reports. The number of Iranian citizens who died in the Hajj stampede last week has been revised to 464. That's nearly double the previous toll. British consumers angry about price fixing can now join American style class action lawsuits for the first time. Lawyers say the new legislation will make it much easier for people to seek compensation when they've been forced to pay over the odds. Clive Coleman reports. Two murals by the graffiti artist Banksy have sold for less than expected at an auction in America. The two pieces fetched just under £200,000 between them. Our Los Angeles correspondent James Cook reports. A large sinkhole measuring 20 metres wide and 10 metres deep has appeared in St Albans. Incidentally, the fire service said it was aware of a small hole yesterday. It was due to be filled in, but then received a call at 1.30 this morning saying it had opened up substantially overnight. That's after the headlines here on the BBC News Channel. In a moment, we say goodbye to viewers on BBC Two. First, the weather. Science. Isn't it the case that if it's an issue of competing rights, uh, yeah. children don't have... Uh, 
a choice in this? Mm. Shouldn't people fundamentally put their rights first in, in order but, to protect but, them? But, but that it's, that somehow there's an assumption that they won't care about this stuff. It, and and that, that in their day-to-day -day lives... This on to the implementation, Amanda, mm. if we may. Uh, I mean, in some sense, you have to wonder what is the point of this ban when the police federation is saying that no force can prioritise this. Uh, do you think that practically this is going to be implemented? You know, there's a little bit of opposition beforehand. It's going to work, the ban? Yeah, I, I think it's difficult to enforce, but I think compliance rates will rise because most people are law-abiding and they want to, be, to do the right thing. From Action on Consumer Choice and also Amanda Sanford from Action on Smoking and Health, thank you both very much for that. Thank you. Now let's return to those airstrikes by Russian aircraft in Syria targeting opponents of President Bashar al-Assad. Over the past week, satellite imagery and reports from the ground have shown what sort of military equipment Russia has in Syria. Here's a look at some of that hardware. An Anzac Day terror attack in Australia plotted by a 14-year-old boy from his bedroom in the UK would in all probability have resulted in a number of deaths if it had not been prevented, a court has heard. The prosecution at Manchester Crown Court said the teenager from Blackburn in Lancashire was radicalised on the internet by so-called Islamic State propaganda and was determined that police officers would be beheaded at the commemoration parade on the 25th of April. Nick, what happened there today? Uh, let's just take you back to St Albans now. It's 11.48. Uh, in a moment, a summary of the business news this hour with Victoria. But first, the headlines on BBC News. We're hearing that uh, Russian forces have made eight airstrikes and hit four Islamic State targets in Syria overnight. That's according to the Russian Defence Ministry. Uh, the Defence Ministry there saying the airstrikes hit terrorist facilities in Idlib province, Hama and Homs. Uh, so that is the latest we have on the situation there. Uh, just a little bit more coming in from the Defence Ministry saying that the airstrikes were strictly targeted outside populated areas. So eight airstrikes overnight, hitting, Russia says, so-called Islamic State targets, but uh, the strikes yesterday were mainly in the part of a Syria controlled by non-IS-linked Syrian opposition forces, so the US is suspicious about whether it is hitting IS targets. More on that coming up, but first of all, let's check out the weather. Heading over to join Jay Wynn on the other side of the news. This is BBC News, I'm Anita McVeigh. The headlines also coming up in the next hour, new rules on... Hello, very good afternoon to you and welcome to BBC News. In the last few minutes, Russia has said it's launched further airstrikes against targets in Syria for a second day. The Russian Defence Ministry says eight strikes targeted four so-called Islamic State positions in the northwest of the country. Yesterday, Russian aircraft carried out about 20 missions against so-called IS. Wednesday's raids were reported in the provinces of Homs and Hama in this purple territory which is mainly controlled by rebels who are not linked to Islamic State. The United States said it was concerned the targets were not IS militants who are based in the Orange Territory. Well, our Moscow correspondent Steve Rosenberg has this report. I'm joined now by Dr. Simon Maybon, a lecturer in international relations at Lancaster University, uh, joining us now from Lancaster. A very good afternoon to you. Good what afternoon. do you think uh, Russia's intentions are now with this military action in Syria? Other nations, primarily the United States, will have with any action that does strengthen President Assad's position. Does this action effectively deepen, worsen the crisis in Syria? There's uh, more analysis of Russia's motivations and maps of... It's being hailed as the biggest shake-up to shoppers' rights for a generation, and it comes into force today. Anything you buy from now on will be covered by the new Consumer Rights Act. The new legislation will offer more protection to customers if something goes wrong with an item. And for the first time, mobile phone downloads will be covered. Ben Thompson has more details. The Afghan government says it's retaken control of the northern city of Kunduz from the Taliban after it was captured by the militant group on Monday. But in a statement, the Taliban insists its fighters are still resisting. I spoke a little earlier to our Kabul correspondent, Wahid Masood, and he told me that the government does now appear to have gained the upper hand. A public inquiry into historical allegations of the abuse of children in care is due to begin in Scotland today. 
Targets are being scrapped in Wales for how long it takes for an ambulance to arrive for most 999 calls. Earlier I spoke to our Wales correspondent Howell Griffith. He began by talking about the poor response record for the ambulance service in Wales. Howell Griffith. The time is uh, a quarter past 12 exactly. The headlines for you now on BBC News. We're hearing the two bodies have been found by search teams looking for two British women who went missing after going for a late night swim in Llore de Mar on the Costa Brava. Uh, that news coming from Spanish search and rescue, finding two bodies. Uh, they were looking for two British women who went missing after going for a late night swim on the Costa Brava last night. We will bring you more details on that as we get them. Now, a ban on smoking in the same vehicle as children comes into force in England and Wales today. Anyone who lights up in a car carrying under 18s can be issued with a fixed penalty of £50. The driver can also be fined for allowing others to smoke, as Richard Lister reports. Leading physiotherapists say the NHS could save millions of pounds each year if more money was spent on reducing the risk of older people falling. More than £2 billion a year is spent on rehabilitation and treating injuries. But experts say simple exercises can prevent a significant number of falls, as our health correspondent Dominic Hughes reports. British consumers angry about price fixing can now join American style class action lawsuits for the first time. Lawyers say the new legislation will make it much easier for people to seek compensation when they've been forced to pay over the odds. Two murals by the graffiti artist Banksy have sold for less than expected at an auction in America. The two pieces fetched just under £200,000 between them, as our Los Angeles correspondent James Cook reports. More now on that massive sinkhole that's 10 metres deep and 20 metres wide and has opened up on a residential street in St Albans, forcing uh, a number of people to leave their homes and also affecting gas and electricity at a number of properties. Uh, we can cross now live to our reporter, Simon Jones, who's on the scene. Uh, Simon, what a shock. You go to bed, there's a small hole on the road outside your house. You wake up and there's a massive sinkhole. Is there a concern that it might get bigger and uh, what's happening with regards to filling it in, making repairs? I mean, for the moment, thank you very much, Simon Jones there in St Albans. And we can talk now to Pete Hobbs, who's a geologist at the British Geological Survey. He joins me now from Nottingham. Uh, thank you very much for your time. How uh, unusual is it for a sinkhole of, of this size to, to open up? And uh, it is time now to take a look at the weather forecast. We can head over to the Weather Centre 